Hello friends and beautiful people. Today we're getting in a whole mess of trouble and I'm actually making a couple videos because it'll take a couple to get to tonight's menu done. We are making rabbit cacciatore. So as you are aware, we raise our rabbits here and uh, we had a female that uh, turned into an attack rabbit. So we decided that she would probably be better served going to freezer camp. So she'd been in there for a little bit. I wanted to make some, actually I wanted to make some fried rabbit and Hubs um, wanted me to go ahead and use her up. So what we've done, let me aim you down here, is, let's see, if I can get you a better view. We have cut this into as small of pieces as we can. Obviously I didn't have him split the breast, but if you'll notice, there are a lot more small bones on a rabbit than you would expect with a chicken. And that's gonna be important to the story here uh, later on in the video. So what we're doing is we have about three tablespoons of olive oil and we have, I'm trying to fix this so that I can do two things at once and she's just not cooperating. Uh, there we go. So we've got about three tablespoons of olive oil in there and we've got this, uh, this is a large heavy pan. Um, I did not buy this pan. This was, this is a super expensive pan that my mom, my mom found in one of the houses that she got from uh, an auction, a real estate auction. So what we're going to do is we are just going to, um, we're going to put our rabbit in here. So salt and pepper it. You can salt and pepper it before you put it in or after. Um, I'm guessing that because of the way I'm doing this video, this is just going to be easier for me. And we're going to we're going to sear this pretty good. We want to get it um, pretty brown because we're going to have to do this in layers. We're going to come in here and hit it with some pepper and a little bit of salt. And we're going to go ahead and put some more in there. And all we're looking to do here is to get a nice brown sear on our rabbit. We are trying to make sure that we get it cooked until it's done. We're just wanting to get a sear through in here. We're not in here. And while that's going on, I'm going to tell you about the rest of the ingredients that you're going to need for our recipe. So we're going to get a nice sear on it. So we're also going to end up using about five garlic cloves, about a pound of tomatoes, and since I don't have fresh tomatoes right now, I'm just going to use one of my quart canning jars. Um, we're going to serve this over a bed of homemade pasta, and so um, that's why I'm using a whole quart jar. So if you're wondering what rabbit tastes like, I know people say it all the time, it tastes like chicken, it really does. The biggest difference that I see in rabbit and chicken is uh, like I said earlier, there's a lot more bones in rabbit. So if you have little, you may want to debone it before you cook it or really go through it well uh, when you do debone it to make sure that, you know, those, the kiddos aren't going to choke on your rabbit. All right, so we're going to need five garlic cloves, a pound of tomatoes, about one and a third cups of dry white wine. I prefer not to use the sweet wine. Then we're going to use two tablespoons of fresh thyme, two tablespoons of fresh oregano, and a tablespoon of fresh rosemary. All right, see how we're getting a nice sear on there. Obviously, on the on the rib cage here, it's not gonna it's not gonna be as easy to do. But we just want to make sure. And basically the reason why we're doing this 
is because rabbit doesn't have a lot of fat. And so what moisture there is in this rabbit, we're searing it in by crisping up the outside of the uh, of all the little pieces. So that we can, you know, so it's gonna get real dry and um, I don't know, feathery, flaky kinda. You know that feathery, flaky taste when you get when like chicken or something has been just cooked too dry? We don't want that. And I will tell you that this will last us for a couple of meals and we will still freeze some of it. I'll end up with probably one of those gallon Ziploc bags full of rabbit and we'll just put that in the freezer and someday when neither one of us feel like cooking, we'll just grab that booger out and have passatory. I was hoping that uh, my mama would be over the next time I made this because she's only had fried rabbit. She's never had cacciatore. And there's a traumatic childhood story that goes along with that. All right. So while this is still braising in there, and I love tongs, on to your friends. We are going to come over here. Remember, that oven is on, that stove is on high. So to keep my thing from slipping, that's just a wet wash rag. What I do with my garlic. Got one of our garlics from out in the garden. Actually, they're in storage now, but we grew these this year. And this is a hard neck variety. I'm going to pause you for just a second. All right, friends. So what I had to, uh, I got to tell you, it's super hard to uh, work on a video and keep your rabbit from burning all at the same time. So now we are just uh, getting our garlic ready to peel. And it only calls for five, but we're Italian, so we're going to use six. And um, she was a pretty big rabbit. I should have keep referring to her as a she. Now at this point, if you want, you can, uh, by the way, if you are watching this video in an effort to learn knife skills, you're on the wrong channel. I've had a chef tell me that if I was ever in the uh, food business doing what he did, that I would be fingerless. Um, I just never got that, that gene given to me as far as using knife skills. It's going to take some practice. So you can either throw these, these uh, garlic cloves in whole if you want. Um, just to, I just usually kind of just smash them down a little if you're going to put them in whole. Or you can just cut them like this. So we have had our uh, rabbit cooking for about 10 minutes. Look at it. Looks pretty good. So next, we, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add our garlic in. And one thing to remember when you are cooking with fresh garlic or any garlic really for all that matter goes, is you know how when you are cooking onions, and you want to caramelize them and cook them for a little bit, you don't want to do that with garlic. You just want to give it a quick sear to get the aromatic flavor out of there, uh, but you don't want to um, scorch it because then you lose some of the flavor that you've got going on with your rabbit or with your uh, garlic. All right, best knife ever. It's ergonomic, so your hand goes there, and then you can just, it, it makes, and it's also good if you are someone who has a carpal tunnel. I got that, uh, I used to work for a restaurant supply house. That's when I uh, worked a lot with chefs, and that was a knife that we were uh, selling at the time to restaurants, and we all got a free sample, and 
you know, there's always been perks and samples uh, in the industry that I'm in. And this has probably been one of the best ones I've ever gotten. And I've gotten some really cool things. But, uh, all right, we've got our last one going. Now, this looks like a lot of garlic. But when you look in this pan, it looks like a lot of rabbit. So, and this is still all going to cook down, so it's not going to be these huge chunks. All right, let's see if we can take you around without making you dizzy. All right, how do you like that? So if you if you notice, we are, uh, you know, we're browned up pretty good on most of it. And it's enough that we're going to, we're going to call it, let me see. I don't know if you can see just how browned up it is, but another way that you can always tell is by looking down at your olive oil because you'll start to see that it'll um, it'll go from that light green color you'll start getting um, either a deeper green or almost a brown color in it so we're going to put this garlic just gonna slide it right in there careful not to burn ourselves And we're just going to just kind of saute it for about a minute. And again, all we're going for here is just to get the aromatic part of that garlic. We want to get that opened up and, and going so that it's just going to penetrate this beautiful rabbit when this is done. The cool thing about this recipe is that with the exception of the olive oil and the wine and the rosemary, we threw everything here on our farm. That always gives me just the, the warm fuzzies. If you are a good rosemary gardener and you would like to tell me how to successfully grow rosemary, that would be stellar because this house is where rosemary comes to die. All right, friends, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my wine and my tomatoes. And this is about, this is a dry white wine, remember that. We're only using the wine that we would drink. We're not gonna buy a cheap wine because we're using it to cook. And then we're gonna do a whole big quart jar of tomatoes. And depending on how all of this cooks down, I might grab another jar. It just depends. It also depends on if we're going to have company. Uh, we might invite a uh, Macedonian neighbor over. Because we all know I love to cook for people. And cooking is my love language. So, well, I like to, I like to cook for people. Let's just put it that way. All right. So we're going to keep this in here. And we are gonna let this, we're gonna reduce our heat down to medium, and we're gonna put a lid on this. We're gonna scrape all these brown bits as much as we can, and we're gonna do that again later too. You just, that's something you just wanna keep doing because you want all those, that's where all the good juicy flavor is. All right, I'm gonna cover this now, cook it on medium for about 30 minutes. We're gonna keep an eye on it, because it shouldn't dry out. And if it does start to dry out, then we need to either add, you can add tomato juice or you can add more wine. More wine's always better. So when we come back, we are going to go ahead and finish and we're gonna add all of our spices. Just remember, we put our spices in towards the end of our cooking. A lot of those are going to um, not have as much flavor if we put them in while we cook and then we cook them for a long time. So when we get back, we will, uh, we're going to simmer her for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and add in all of our spices. In the meantime, you and I are going to do another video and we're going to make homemade pasta. All right, friends, we have now taken our rabbit out of the saucepan and we've left all the sauce in there, all the good, yummy goodness of the sauce. And we are actually, you don't have to do this, but we are actually going to 
debone our rabbit at this time. So we have let it cool off a little. And then we're going to add our spices into the sauce and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, friends. So I've got Hubs doing double duty and he is deboning my rabbit for me. You don't have to debone it, uh, we just choose to. And right now I am making sure that I am scraping all the yummy bits, the little brown bits off the bottom of our pan from where we were uh, sauteing it, the rabbit ahead of time because we want all that flavor and all that goodness in there and I can still see that garlic, it's delicious. So the reason why we are taking our rabbit out is because we are gonna add our herbs. And the, uh, we wanna make sure that the herbs are all incorporated into this sauce. We don't want it to just be laying on parts of the rabbit. Check and see if that's a bone of meat, if you would please, dear. All right, so now for the herbs. We are gonna put, let's see, now I, I gotta come back over here. We want about two tablespoons of, and you, we usually use fresh thyme, and I, this is, these are my herbs. These uh, yeast jars are awesome to put herbs in. I um, use this for the smaller batches and I use my canning jars for larger ones. But um, anything that I'm worried is gonna get exposed to light, I go ahead and put in these amber colored jars and I love it. So remember, it's different between dry and fresh. And we're gonna put the equivalent of two tablespoons of fresh thyme. Oops, I just threw thyme all over the stove. And then we want two tablespoons of fresh oregano. I have a little bit left in this little jar I need to use up. And then we go back to the canning jar because we use a lot of oregano. Oregano has a lot of great benefits for your body. And then my store-bought rosemary. We're going to put the equivalent of a tablespoon of rosemary one tablespoon of rosemary in there. And now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cook this down a little bit. We're gonna get all of these herbs infused into our sauce. And really, we're only gonna, we're gonna cook this for about, I don't know, five minutes. And then we're gonna add the rabbit back in. And we're gonna start our pasta water. So that the goal here is to make sure we when we put the rabbit back in, we're gonna warm it back up, but we wanna have this done at the same time that we have our pasta done, and our pasta is only gonna go in the water for like three minutes because we made it ourselves. And that's it, friends. Now all I have to do is add the rabbit back in as soon as he's got it. So if you have any questions, post them below. This was a, a hard video to do because I had to splice it together in a bunch of little parts. So if I miss something, I apologize. But until next time, friends, be blessed and be a blessing.